know something? More than half the people who live on this little planet now live in cities. Human beings have become an urban species, and the cities we live in are growing by over a million people every week. Things will never be the same again. Welcome to Lagos, the largest city in Nigeria and the fastest growing of all the megacities of 10 million people and more, which are popping up all over the world. Each week, another 10,000 people pour into the slums which make up three quarters of Lagos. And they're already full to bursting. Every square inch is being used by someone. And space is in such demand that the city is sprawling in every direction it can, even into the lagoon which surrounds it. When we first come here, all this place is water, surrounded with water. But despite this chaotic approach to urban planning, life in the ghettos on the water isn't all about poverty, pollution, and cholera, you know. These people can show you that a little bit of chaos is not always a bad thing. God is sinking, is sinking down. They are trying to, to bail it off. <laughs> They're resourceful, determined, and unbelievably resilient. This heart is my own identity to let people recognize the work that I'm doing. <laughs> and they're successfully adapting to the realities of modern city life in ways which you, in the so-called developed world, couldn't even imagine. If you want to know how the city has grown, then these are the people to ask. The inhabitants of Lagos's version of Venice, a slum built on water called Makoko. Two hundred years ago, this was just a small fishing village on the edge of Lagos Lagoon. But as more and more people flooded into the expanding city, looking for somewhere to settle, they began to build houses on stilts. Now Makoko extends half a mile out into the water and is home to over 100,000 people. And counting. I'm so happy today. For more happiness, my child deliver new baby. Girl, I'm so happy. Come on. Now we have a look. <laughs> Take this guy, Chube. He first came here some 40 years ago when he was in his 20s and he's seen the place transformed. Now, age 65, he's the proud father of 18 children and, as of today, five grandchildren most of whom still live with him in the oldest part of Makoko. Like most of the people who first settled in Makoko, Chube is a fisherman. But with three daughters at university, ten children at various schools, and more and more food to put on the table every day, he's become an expert at making money from the most unlikely of places. I'm making the fish one. If we do the fish pond, you will get, if you use almost 100,000, it may be at the end of the day, you can get 200,000. So 100,000 will be your profit. 
straight, 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 straight line. You see, this is the fish we we train for the fish pond. Yeah. Okay. Drop it. By next year, we enjoy some, so we can make a pepper soup and have a taste how the fish look like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I want to go to the toilet. There is no order. You could sit here, the water will wash it away. So you cannot get order. Everything is clean. That's why we love it. Now, you might not want to go for a swim around here, but everything else in Makoko takes place on the water. People commute to work. Goods are brought to market. And every day, the children are rowed to school. And it's water that accounts for the huge piles of rubbish lying by people's houses. Because this is no ordinary litter. It's land reclamation, Makoko style. You see all this rubbish? We put all this rubbish. After six months, when it is settled down again, we put another rubbish. To avoid the smelling, we go to Ibutemeta uh, and collect the sundogs. So we put these uh, sundogs on top. When it's strong, we started to put sand on top, so it will be straight. <laughs> when we first come here, all this place is water, surrounded with water. So from up over there, you can get it. all this water. We just make this type of bridge this type of bridge. So when we look at uh, the bridge, always the plank damage, we feel that if we started to adopt another system that with all this rubbish, we can use to fill all this place. So we develop here by ourselves. Makoko must be one of the only places on earth where people actually pay to have rubbish dumped on their doorsteps. The standard fee for a load of rubbish, diverted from the dump, is 30 pence. And after a couple of years, a ton or so of sand, and a few boatloads of sawdust, you've got yourself an island. Unless, of course, your boat springs a leak. <laughs> This, uh, this boat, boat is sinking, is it's sinking, sinking down. <laughs> They're trying to, to bail it up. This is not an issue. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Half a mile or so downstream from Makoko is the place where all this sawdust comes from, Ebute Meta, West Africa's largest timber yard. Clustered along the banks of the lagoon are more than a hundred sawmills, cutting vast quantities of timber every day. As the slums of Lagos continue to expand, it's this place which is supplying all the wood. Hey, come on. This guy, Paul, came here five years ago from his village in the east, looking for work and a place to sleep on the sawdust. Now he's worked his way up to one of the top jobs in the yard, as chief saw operator at Fumi's mill. This is very big wood. Very, very big. I'm putting the measurement. This one brings big measurement. This one will produce big money. In 
In charge of a team of eight, cutting up to 200 planks in a day, Paul has become one of the highest earners in the mill. And after a year of saving, he finally has a good chance to fulfill his ambition, his own house in Makoko. All he needs is a few thousand naira more, and the place is his. But for the time being, he lives in the office, in the corner of the mill. This is the mat that I'm sleeping with. At times in the night, I put it in this way. I put it in this way. And when I'm sleeping at night, this is how I do put it. When there is no mosquito, that's the time that I sleep correct. But when there's mosquito, I can't sleep. It's not cool being here because he saw me where I walk. I'm supposed to have my own personal room as a person that have rented house. So I'm, the saw is door and it's cut. Want to cut. So I'm removing it because I want to cut. When I leave it now, next thing you will hear, why? <laughs> Sunday. Oh yeah, come and carry it to Sodoto. Tell Sodoto that you saw one to cut and it's dull, it's bending. A few days ago, Paul took on two boys called Sunday and Afis, who both left their parents in the country to come to Lagos to look for work and have now ended up in Abute Meta. They claim to be 15 and 17, but no one really believes them. Uh -huh, go with this. The work in Abute Meta is very hard. There are many work. The one that I'm doing now, when you have power, you can't do it because you are going to carry a big wood. You are going to push the machine with your power. So before you walk here, you need to have the power. <laughs> They are trying, Sunday and the artists, they are trying. They are the one to bring the saw, that is their work, to change the saw. But Sunday is complaining that he wants to go break, that he wants to go and eat. <laughs> that is getting weak. Fumi, the mill boss, is keeping a close eye on Paul's new recruits. She's run this place with an iron fist for 20 years and can spot trouble from 100 yards. <laughs> Fumi's is typical of most of the mills in the Bute Meta. They're family owned and run by the wives, and they tend to buy off the same individual suppliers year in, year out. Anywhere else in the world, there'd be multinational logging firms all over this place. But around here, anyone with a bit of sense and a chainsaw can set themselves up as a logger. Length is 12 for one. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, market. 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 I'm a shit, you can give them. Moses here is a student at Ogun State University, 100 kilometers outside Lagos. While many undergraduates have part time jobs, he pays for his entire marine engineering course by coming to his local jungle twice a year to cut the plentiful awan trees, which are much in demand at Ibuti Meta. When bush days in Lagos, nowhere you can find this uh, type of uh, wood, type of this tree. No, no wood of an uh, angle tree. Because in those days, they don't fell uh, all this one. They don't fell and finish for Lagos, Lagos area. Because you know that uh, Lagos area is nearby the Somi. That is why they finish the forest there. Okay. 
That's it, Abby. So from here to that place is 12 feet, 12 one. When we carry to reach Lagos, he will be able to pay us very well. We can see, we, we can see like a 500 naira or 1,000 naira on one piece like this. Moses has hit on a simple way to get his wood out of the forest. He waits for the rainy season to flood the area and comes back with a boat to drag the whole lot into the nearest river, which floods into the Lagos Lagoon. From there, it's a three-day journey to Ebute Meta, which is where his troubles really start. When I get to Lagos, I'm never happy. Trouble of Lagos State is too much. Area boss, talk boss, there are plenty. They will be able to touch them, pick pocket, do this. Do that. But I will, I will collect something before you go. But at uh, this area, nothing like that. A couple of days after he stocked his new fish pond, Chubay's come up with another surefire way of making extra money for his family. He's found a cheap source of imported European fish and plans to turn his home into a fish smokery. Well, we take uh, fishing as our occupation, so nothing pertains to the fish, how to kill it, how to smoke it, how to butcher it, how to cut it, everything we know. This fish is a foreign fish, so they import this to Nigeria here. After when they smoke it, they will took it to market. In Nogi, out of the, this uh, one bag, you can get uh, 500 or 1,000 gain. Chuba is especially keen for his teenage son, Payo, to get involved. He started hanging out with a local gang and he's driving his parents up the wall. My father, the name is Bien that Ojulawa, he didn't thief. My father didn't thief. And my father born me. I didn't thief. And I want that name to rain on my son. That is a good child. That is why I'm talking. Because we must be vigilant. And I want my child to be a good child. Fish are not the only thing on Chubei's mind. After a lot of hard work, he's come up with a fiendishly complicated mathematical formula, which he is sure will guarantee huge winnings in the national lottery. Yeah, this is a shot of the lotto. The, the shot is this. If you watch the game here, that uh, this week he played this number. After four weeks, you repeat this social number. After you count one, two, three, you're supposed to play these two games. So you may carry it and they play the game. This is the way we use this chart to forecast. So this is Lotto International. Yes, I'm with you. Every evening, without fail, Chube insists his entire family gather for a meal. All our family will sit down together and eat together. That's what we call a good family. And to be eating together, it will encourage your child. When he grown up, to gather as well, to eat with the children. I provide the life to eat together more than to chop alone. Anybody chop alone, die alone. <laughs> As 
as dawn creeps over the waters of the lagoon, it's easy to forget the noisy, dirty chaos of the modern city. Because out here, nothing has changed for decades. Every morning, clustered together somewhere near the centre of the lagoon, you'll find this flotilla of boats and 500 or so sand boys getting ready to dive for sand at the bottom of the lagoon, 10 feet below. <laughs> Daniel and Kismi have been collecting sand the old-fashioned way, by hand, with a bucket, their whole lives. The breeze blocks used to build the slums and tower blocks of Lagos all start here. <laughs> Let me use my draw first. Yeah, yeah. This is alcohol, aromatic shinaps. <clears throat> I only need little, just small. It's fine. The moment you use this, get inside water, you will feel all right. You won't feel cold. This is a bucket. Now, I won't go inside water. Just like this. When I go like this. Look at me. This is how we are used to walk. Yeah. Hey, huh? Silence. Huh? Silence. Huh? This is use. So a lot of buckets. Working fast before the sun gets too high, it usually takes Daniel and Kiss Me just a couple of hours to fill this whole boat with the high quality sharp sand so essential to the building trade. I so love it. If I'm inside the water, I'm okay. I don't feel tired. You know when the sand is inside the bucket, it will be very light when you are coming up. But by the time you want to move it up, it will be very heavy. So you need to use your own power to push it and put it inside the room. This bucket, I see him be the iron. We chop the hand, see how the hand be. This is the, the iron that I chop the, our hand. That's why our hand just be like this. Let me clean it. This is how it is. This is hand so like uh, a detective. Anywhere I, I be, my hand I will sue them. That is the type of work I'm working. So they will recognize it. Say how uh, it is true that you are working in this type of work. The hard work, oh my brother. I can't just tell you lie. Let's see, by, by one hour to this time, we have to finish this boot. So that's how it is be. Barely a week after taking on the two new boys, Paul's regular assistant saw operator has quit. And Sunday can't believe his luck because Paul has decided to try him out in the job. It's Sunday that is doing the work now. So Sunday is doing it. He's trying for pushing the machine. Uh, but he's a small boy, no, he's a small boy. So, but he's trying as much as he can, eh? As a small boy. I'm even praising him. But why she said, then be by. He said, be by, no lag by, my mom, far as it's not quick in my shape. But my shade, dear, dear, oh, mommy, Lala. 
but to our mammy, I am in Gonzalez. Concerning what to me, she shall more some, but she shall Sunday's promotion will bring him an extra 80 pence a day, but he needs to watch out. Only two weeks ago, a new saw operator was electrocuted and killed. And this morning, a few doors down from Fumi's yard, another broken electric cable has just been discovered. The cable that brings the light direct from the meter down to the machine is the cable that got caught. So if anybody incidentally touched the cable, it's totally dead. Last night, Payo disappeared and didn't get in until this morning. And Chube is worried that he's going to get in real trouble. To protect him, Chube has called in a local herbalist to apply a magic formula to a series of razor cuts. <laughs> If the tape broke a uh, bottles, shook you, you will not enter. Knife you will not enter. Machete will not enter. This is what we're doing now. All the boys in Lagos, they will come as a last cowboy. We, we don't uh, have money when we use with the tradition. We are to doing this to guide ourselves because we don't, all those big men who don't get money, they can keep a security in their guilt, but we will not get security, we will not get the thing what you know, you will take to protect yourself. Chube was brought up using these traditional methods in his home village and still uses a number of preparations and charms, which he has adapted for modern city life. Yeah. This one is for my own protection and it's our tradition use, not English people use. It's we black prepare this by ourselves, by oracle. It's black medicine, so we make it. There's so many things inside. There's the air, there's the teeth, there's the so many things. But I cannot count all. It can help you when you then shoot you gun. It will not affect you, so you can escape yourself. If you have a pile, this one it will not make you go to toilet. But it will make your toilet to be soft. It will soft. If you want to go to the toilet, you can go two times in a day. And it will be very soft. It will be very easy for you when you go to the toilet. So not that you go to the toilet, you started to make... <clears throat> but no! So it will dissolve everything. It will come very soft. And when you want to go to the toilet, you will love it. Just like that. <laughs> That's one of the most striking things about Makoko. Most of the people who live here are like Chube and have come from rural and coastal villages. And now, even though they live less than a mile away from the bustling modern city center, they still happily combine living in the 21st century with their more 
traditional way of doing things. Tribal rituals take place with the premiership playing in the background. Health centres supply antibiotics and bark remedies in equal measure. And although everyone has a mobile phone, the news still gets spread by word of mouth. And OK, not everything that is old-fashioned around here is charming. The plumbing, for one, is medieval. And the government, one of the richest in Africa thanks to the oil industry, does absolutely nothing for the place except draw up plans to destroy it. But none of this has stopped Makoko becoming one of the most sought-after postcodes in downtown Lagos. By mid-morning, Daniel and Kismi's boat is full with as much sand as they can carry without sinking. Raising their sail, made from rice sacks, hand-stitched together, they join the Armada on the 15-mile journey back to the city. This sand that we are bringing is a beautiful one. Many beautiful houses in Lagos today is the sand that we people were praying that they are using to build the, the house. So we proud about, uh, uh, about the work, but uh, solely that the work is very hard work. I just uh, 50 years age. Sooner or later, I will retire because I can't just say I will keep on with this work. In the future, maybe that time they will use machine. <laughs> That's a special one. We love that one. <laughs> so that one is a easy job. One of the reasons it's been so hard for Paul to save enough money to move out of the mill is because of Lagos's erratic electricity supply. Daily power cuts plague the whole city, but in Ibute Meta, when the lights go out, the saws go silent. Uh, the problem so far is that uh, when there is no work like this, when they never take light, we stay and our money doesn't read. We don't collect any money. So when there is light, that's where we collect salary from the work that we do. It's another three hours before the power comes back on. And Paul and the boys are seriously behind. <laughs> and they've barely got started when everything suddenly comes to a halt. I had news now that the lady the key one operator. Now, wow. I'm very. I never. Shabby, we go meet him. That uh, lady the key one operator that he never passed one weekend. We tell because of his stop work for two or three days. Hey, you have one bag, you better now. Get a jumper. When does it ever end? The lady is just the kill of letters like foul. Regardless of the tragedy, no one's earned any money today. 
and knowing the whole mill will be shut down for three days out of respect for the dead operator, Paul decides to keep his saw working through the night. One operator died, so we will not work tomorrow. All operators will assemble somewhere else. We will do meeting for that. It's midnight when they cut the last plank. Sunday and Afis have been at the yard since six o'clock this morning. It's not easy because we are sewing baby who's not small wood. So they tried a lot and I praise all of them. So the work comes and end by this time. So we close by this time, you know. Even though his house is full to bursting with his ever-expanding family, Chube has decided there's always room for one more. He's heard of a friend of a friend who is looking for a room to rent and has offered to help him out. As most of the newcomers to the city don't have much money, he's trying to get the rent up front. 28,800. I wouldn't, it would not much than, let me say, six months, no, you know, pass. Six months? Couldn't pass. It too much. I feel like to just give you everything because if I, I know someone, if you're uh, there for your mind, I know, I know, I know what you are saying. Like, no, 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 no. You say, just, you go so and uh, you say, it's a miracle working God. You can, you know, if you reach the, the time that are to you, money coming. Because I believe in him. Yes, everybody believe in God. We, a woman being, we are only know today. Nobody know no. tomorrow except Almighty only God. Lord. Nothing we can do past God. I just want to do this yeah. favor. Mm -hmm. If we get like 25,000 naira, the God, eh? look, if we get like 25,000 naira, you understand me? Bring that one. That will be done. Okay. Okay. All right. All Chube needs now is a room. And to save as much money as possible, he plans to build one himself. Uh, I'm so happy. Because when you work, you do the work with the happiness. Because if you do it with annoyance, the job will not form. <laughs> Five miles out, in the middle of the lagoon, the logs which Moses cut from the jungle a couple of weeks ago are making their way to Ebute Meta. With a group of 20 or so other lockers, Moses has made a huge raft over a kilometer long, which is being towed by tugs on the three-day journey into Lagos. It's not that uh, I'm only the one that gets this 3,500, but my own is uh, 100 pieces out of it. So, likewise, my friend, they, they, every person has their own pieces. Obama, in your dudu, ni? Hello, Africa, America, no? Would you present it? Okay, okay. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're present it. You're not alone. Popo, show what I've heard now. Anybody fellow America come over? 
A couple of hours later, the loggers reached the city center. Piloting a raft the length of nine football pitches through the arches of the third mainland bridge is never easy. And today, the tide is against them. They've barely got 100 meters through when the whole thing becomes stuck. Almost immediately, the first touts from Ibuti Meta start appearing on the raft, sizing up the cargo, looking for the best early deals. Although Moses has been trading with them for years, he knows full well that they're all out to rip him off. Despite all the activity on the raft, on shore everything is silent, as Paul and the other operators show their respect for Baba Toyin, the man killed at his saw. This is the machine that the, the, the operator died. The cable was on top of the handle of the machine. That is how the electricity killed him. The cable of the machine connected at the wood, and as connected at the wood, he gummed the man, and the man died instantly. They never repair it, that is why I can't touch it anyhow. The cable, this is the cable. Paul and the other saw operators are having a collection to help pay for the dead man's funeral. But with two of their friends killed in less than a month, they're up in arms about the conditions they have to work in. It's the cops, the cops of the man. The Pretos Association, they are the ones that brought the cops that they use, they want to use in taking the dead body to his hometown. That's the last respect for the man. Baba Toyin had worked at the sawmill for more than 30 years. He had two wives and seven children, and he'd been planning to retire at the end of the year. As a last act of kindness, Paul and the others collect another few hundred naira to make sure the driver can get the family all the way home to their village. We believe this time around that every, each and every operator will be using hand glue and rubber shoes so that we protect our lives from machine shock and electricity. And that is the thing that we did inside meeting this morning for us to protect our life. Because life has no duplicates, as you can understand. While the men sort out the funeral arrangements, the small boys at the mill are making the most of their unexpected downtime. <laughs> 
For Sunday and Hafiz, this will be the last day off for a while. After working the night shift, Fumi has decided to keep them on permanently. Everybody is afraid of this work because this work is very wicked. But now, it has now become our best work. So, we love the work that we are doing here. I love working in everything like that. Since Chube performed the black magic ritual on him, his son Payo's behavior has got worse. He's done nothing to help out at home, and while his dad's been struggling to build the lodger's new room, he's been out partying with his friends. And now Chube has had enough. This evening, Chubes asked Payo to arrange for a second boat to help collect all the wood from a butimeta which he needs to finish building the new room. The following morning, Payo is supposed to be helping Chube pick up the remaining wood. But once again, he went out all night. And by the time Chube gets home, Payo is only just getting in. <laughs> To make matters worse, Chube's boat almost sank on the way home. How we punish child that you cannot do for me? You know, because I got locked on me, don't lock on me, don't have to hear my opinion. The Bible said that when you born a child, train your child. When you grown up, he will give you rest. This is what I'm doing.
Eleven, uh -huh. five, uh -huh. oh, three, uh -huh. six. Uh -huh. You know, I'm trying to give you a say. I'm cool. Oh, my Jackie, she's a pair. She's a poor girl. She's a poor girl. She's a poor girl. She's a poor it's Moses' last day in Lagos. All his wood has been measured, and this afternoon he's heading back to university to pay his fees. All he needs to do now is agree the figures with his buyer. Hello, no. You got to be done. If he's want to try to cheat me, <laughs> he's try to cheat me, and uh, I, will, I will not agree with him. And I will say with the price. Lagos, they are too rugged. You know, Lagos boy, everything shout, 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 shout. They like to threaten you whether you will come to their line. That is the Lagos uh, character, Lagos habit. They like to shoot uh, their neighbors. <laughs> It's my in-law, so you can't tell me what is not. Why is 78 could be 250? Four hours later, they finally agree a price. Total money is 89,400 now. So I, me too, I'm very, very active. So I, I'm not wanting him to beat me down. That is why I'm strong and I'm strong my fist. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the house that I want to pay. This is my own house now. Despite all the setbacks, Paul has finally managed to save the 15,000 Naira deposit he needs to start renting his own place. So this is where I'll be, be living now. Then I'll be out from the summit where I'm sleeping. This is the new house that I get now. The house get light, but I will connect the remaining light there now as soon as possible when I enter inside. The window, the wood now is not good anymore, but I will change the wood. I put everything in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The total money will be 15,500. So count this first. You know, money talks, money do undo. Money rule the world, as you can learn. So, and because of money, we are in, in the city. Looking for the money, fetching for money. When money is hiding up and down, we believe that one day we grab it. We get it. <laughs> Later, I will put my own key, because this is their own key. But uh, yeah, proud house owner. <laughs> Money is breeze, it's flowing like air. When it comes to poor man, the poverty will change and the poor man will be rich. And, and that is the thing that comes to poor people and they become rich and they stay like rich people. Enjoying today are rich, rich, richer. And that's how I feel. It's two months since Chube installed his fish pond. And thanks to his loving care, the 200 sprats he put in have already doubled in size. As the more you put, more the job, more we give them rapid grow. He's finally managed to finish the new room. And Joseph, the lodger, has found the money for the full deposit and is ready to move in any day now. And the foreign fish smoking business is a roaring success, selling all over Makoko. 
And to cap it all, even Chubei's magical mathematical formula has come good. Chubei win lotto. This is what Baba Jebu brought for Lagos. For we, a poor man, to helping us. So when you put a little money, you get a big money. You take a 20 naira and win 4,008. It's a lot. Thank you. It's a risky, it's a gambler. In this Lagos, anybody came to this Lagos and he didn't have his sense. He cannot get sense anymore. Because here, if you are a fool, they will learn you how to get sense. If you are a Dundee United, when they started to plot pepper on you, you will get sense. I will see the napping and napping the two down. That's 25, 31. The two enter. I put 14 naira, that's 9,006. Plus 4,008. That's a 14,400. <laughs> it's a big money. <laughs> if you are a mogul, when they play you up and down, from there you will get a green light, you will see the road. So Lagos, anybody come to Lagos, if you not get sense, you will go back with full sense. Because when they started to dribble you, dribble you, your eye will open. So Lagos is a city of no yabin. <laughs> this is how it is. So I want to give to my child now, you should go and collect the money for me with immediately affect <laughs> and with automatic alacrity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Chube and the others are just some of the 11 million people in the slums that give Lagos its unique character. But all that might be about to change. A new breed of politicians have drawn up plans to demolish the slums and turn Lagos into a megacity of the future. In 10 years time, it's going to be great. Lagos, I believe Lagos is going to, we are going to compare Lagos and London. Yes, in 10 years time, you will see people from London, England, Ireland, will like to come to Lagos to come and have their, maybe their, their holidays. If your school would like to twin with a school in Nigeria, take a look at the website bbc.co.uk slash worldclass. Tonight's debate was a lot more confrontational than the first. We had the highlights, reaction from top politicians, analysis from our political and diplomatic editors, political insiders and instant voter verdicts. That's Newsnight in half an hour. <laughs>